You know, I have to say, I think probably one of our favorite meals in our house involves eggs. Breakfast, we just adore breakfast. So today, I'm starting with a scrumptious breakfast in a cup. Then it's a delicious hash brown quiche, which is perfect with my white hot chocolate. My tasty ultimate coffee cake will certainly hit the spot, and you can't go wrong with my easy omelet for a crowd. So y'all put on your fuzzy slippers and get ready for a breakfast egg extravaganza. I have found that one of the favorite things that I fix for my overnight guest is breakfast in a cup. I'm gonna put together grits, eggs, sausage, and cheese, but I'm gonna serve it in a cup. Now I've got two cups of water boiling right here. I'm gonna add a little salt to it, and then I'm gonna stir in a half a cup of quick cooking grits. Now I don't use the long cooking grits because they'll take about 30 minutes. If I have the time, I'll cook my quick grits for up to 30 minutes. The longer you cook them, the creamier and softer they get. Now, you'll want to immediately start stirring your grits. One of the mistakes that people make when they're cooking grits is they'll dump them in and walk away. And of course, you'll wind up with golf balls if you do that. So we want to stir our grits into our boiling water until they come back to a ball. And then we're going to put this on simmer and I'm gonna add a little bit of butter to those. That'll help make them creamy and tasty. And those are looking good, no clumps. All right, now I'm gonna turn that down a little bit and I'm gonna cook eggs two different ways this morning. I wanna show you a quick and easy way in case you don't have an egg poacher that you can poach the perfect beautiful egg. Now in this pot, I got some hot water. I'm gonna just turn that up so it can come back to a ball. I'm gonna add a little salt to it. And I'm gonna pour in some vinegar. And the vinegar will help draw your egg up. All right, so for poaching our egg, I'm gonna crack an egg into a separate dish because you wanna check out your eggs and make sure that they're all right before I start swirling them into the water. I'm gonna get a swirl going in that water and then I'm gonna drop my egg into that rolling, swirling water. For an over medium egg, you're looking at probably about three minutes. Now since these are getting about the right consistency, I'm gonna add a little bit of my half and half, stir that in and look how creamy you can see that they are getting a lot creamier look to them. Okay, so our grits are perfect. Our egg is ready. It's got that yellow, soft yellow center, but the whites are done. So I'm gonna leave that right there. Now let's go on to our scrambled eggs for those that like scrambled eggs for breakfast. So, I'm just gonna crack two eggs. All right, those eggs look nice. So I'm gonna add a little salt, a little pepper, and instead of adding milk to my eggs, I like to add a little water because it just seems to make them less tough. And I'm gonna add a spoonful of sour cream. To me, the sour cream just makes for a creamier egg. And I've got my pan on low about a teaspoon of butter. Now I'm gonna just pour in our eggs. And I like my eggs cooked a little on the slow side. I'm just gonna take my spoon and just work the egg out to the edge, almost like I would if I was cooking an omelet. And that's coming together nicely. Now in my other pot, I've got our breakfast meat. I'm using a regular country sausage. Now let's take everything that we've gotten together. We've got our scrambled eggs, we've got our grits, we've got our, our sausage. Now I like to serve my breakfast in a cup and a glass mug so that you can see everything that's layered in there. So I'm gonna start with grits. And the bulk of my breakfast 
is gonna be the grits. Cause down south we eat, we eat a lot of grits. Our plate is mainly taken up by the grits that we put on it. All right, so into the other cup goes the rest of the grits. Okay, so then um, on goes the sausage or bacon or ham, whatever meat you prefer. And then goes the egg. And this one's gonna get the poached egg. And this one is gonna get the scrambled eggs. I'm gonna add just a little of my scrambled since I didn't poach but one egg. All right. And the last thing going on is our cheese. and then a little fresh parsley. So what do you say if I slip a little taste out? Mmm, this is my favorite way to eat breakfast. Y'all don't go anywhere because when we come back, I wanna show y'all a delicious, quick and easy quiche and it's not gonna have a flour crust, but a hash brown crust. And I'm gonna be making white hot chocolate, so y'all don't go anywhere. I so hope y'all are enjoying the show. And if you do, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. And we'll be right back after the break. Well, I'm so glad to see that y'all came back. I just went out into the garden and picked some fresh mint because I'm gonna be putting up that on top of our white hot chocolate. But before we get started on that, I wanna show you this wonderful quiche. And it doesn't have your standard pastry crust. We're gonna use a hash brown potato. And I've got three cups, a, a store-bought, frozen hash brown and I'm gonna put just a little salt and a little pepper just season them up a little bit and then I'm gonna toss them in a half a stick of melted butter and that's gonna help bind them together all right so we're gonna toss those in and I've got my pie plate over here and I'm gonna spray it with a little nonstick spray all right, now all we're gonna do is just toss our hash browns into my pie plate. And I'm gonna press these down, forming them in my dish like a crust. And just keep pressing and working it around. So that's pressed in there nice and firm. So let's get this popped in the oven. 25 minutes at 450 degrees. Now, I've got one that's already browned up for us. And look at that. You can see the crispiness going on with those potatoes. Now, while I'm waiting on that to cool, let's step down here and start on our white hot chocolate. And to our saucepan, I'm gonna add one cup of white chocolate chips. That sounds like a great start, doesn't it, y'all? I'm gonna add one cup of heavy cream. So see, it sounds sinful, doesn't it? All right, now I'm just gonna stir these together until that melts, which won't take long at all. And while I'm waiting for those to melt, let's put together the center of our quiche. Now you can, you can use your favorite ingredients. I've got ham, and I'm gonna use about three-fourths a cup. Okay, that looks like about three-quarters of a cup. And I'm gonna use about a half a cup of diced green onions. And it looks like about three onions are gonna be just right. Now I'm gonna take three eggs. Oops, <laughs> one fell out of the basket. You can always increase your eggs and the amount of your other ingredients and make your quiche thicker. But I think three eggs are gonna work nicely. Some salt, some pepper. Now 
we're just gonna beat those up. And to our eggs, we're gonna add one cup of half and half. I'm gonna toss in our green onions. In goes our ham. Last, we're gonna toss in our cheese. And I'm just using a nice, sharp cheddar cheese. All right. That looks great. Now we're just gonna pour this into our crust. Now we're gonna wanna lower our oven temperature to 350 degrees. We're not gonna need to bake this as high as we did our crust. And that'll take about 30 minutes. So back in the oven it goes. And it'll be ready before we know it. Now let's jump back on our hot chocolate. Our chips are starting to melt. So I'm gonna add four cups or one quart of half and half. And we're just gonna let that simmer until it's nice and hot. Ooh, and it smells so good. All right, so we'll just give that a couple of minutes. All right, I think we're safe now to add our vanilla. Y'all hear Lady Bird out there? All right, one teaspoon of vanilla. If you're entertaining a crowd, this would be great to put in your crock pot and keep it warm so that people could just come and dip out their own. So here we go. Mmm. Look at that. I don't think we can have a cup of hot chocolate without a nice dollop of heavy cream. and a sprig of mint from my garden. All right, and instead of using just a plain old stirrer for this, I'm gonna use a fresh vanilla bean. And if you wanna bring a little color to it, you can sprinkle it with some nice grated chocolate, or you can top it with some grated white chocolate. Unbelievable, y'all. So why don't you go into the kitchen, see if you've got the stuff to make this, because I want to share with y'all a recipe for an ultimate coffee cake. And later, my omelet for a crowd is sure to get that family moving. I hope y'all are enjoying the show, and I want to hear from you. Tell me what recipes or videos you'd like to see me make by just leaving a short comment below. Now, let's get back to the show, y'all. Well, y'all, while we were on break, I have been a busy, busy beaver. Look at this. I have got food strung from one end of this counter to the other. All right, now our quiche is ready. So why don't we pull that out first thing? Oh, gosh, it smells good. Look at that. Those potatoes, those hash brown potatoes, y'all, have just like made a nest. All right, let's cut into it and see what we've got. You can see it's done because we pulled out a nice clean knife. Look at that, isn't that pretty? I think a little dollop of sour cream, and that'll go perfectly with the potatoes. And a few sprinkles of onions, and we're ready to dig in. It's just perfect. Mmm, I could stand down here and eat that whole piece. But come on down here, because I told you I have got food spread from one end of this counter to the other. And one of the things I think that you're gonna love is called an ultimate coffee cake. Now I'm gonna start with a frozen yeast roll that you get in the frozen food section at your grocery store. Now I'm gonna take my bunt pan and I'm gonna give it a light spray 
So we're just gonna drop this down in our bunt pan. So you'll need to have a little planning going on when you serve this dish because it's gonna take about eight to 10 hours for this to rise. So right before you hop in the bed, just put your rolls in just like that. Now we're gonna use one small package of butterscotch pudding mix. And we're just gonna sprinkle this pudding mix right on top of those rolls. And now on top of that, we're gonna add a half a cup of chopped pecans just all around our rolls. Now we're gonna add a half a cup of brown sugar and I wanna pack it down in there. Sprinkle that around. And then the last step is one stick of melted butter and we're just gonna pour that over our rolls and our pudding mix and our brown sugar and our pecans. And it's looking great. Bring it down here and cover it with a clean dishcloth and let it just sit on the counter for eight to 10 hours. So sleep tight, my little baby. Come on down here, I've got one that has been rising, and you can see that it's more than doubled in size. So we're gonna pop this in the oven at 350, and we're gonna let it bake for 30 minutes. So in that goes. Now while that's baking, I wanna show y'all an easy, easy way to make omelets for a crowd. You can involve your family and friends in the making of their own individual omelets. Now, I've got all kind of ingredients up here, so all I'm gonna do is take my eggs and break them into a bowl. This is just the most fun way to entertain at brunch time, y'all. And I'm gonna bust enough eggs that I know will feed the whole crowd. I'm gonna put some salt and some pepper. All right, so our eggs are in a big bowl, beaten up and ready for everybody. All of our ingredients are surrounding our pot. When we come back, I'm gonna fill up a bag with my favorite ingredients for an omelet and show you how easy it is to serve an omelet to a crowd of folks. I so hope y'all are enjoying the show. And if you do, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. And we'll be right back after the break. Hey y'all, welcome back. Let me get the coffee cake out of the oven. Ooh, look at this ultimate coffee cake, would you? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press him down because you can see that those uh, yeast rolls, they each rose to a different size, which is kind of fun and funky. So I'm gonna just do it this way. Look, look at that, y'all. Is that not a beautiful coffee cake? All right, well, let's run back down here to our omelets. Now, I'm using a strong, resealable plastic bag, and I found a mug up in the cabinet that fits just perfectly so that it will just give me a strong base to make my omelet in. Now, I'm gonna start with a little of my beaten egg. And this is the fun part. I think that for mine, I'm gonna put spinach and bacon. And I'm gonna reach over there and get me some cheese. Look at that. I'm gonna let that air out of that bag and then just kind of squish it together and then I'm gonna drop it in my ball in water. And in about eight to 10 minutes, I'm gonna have a delicious omelet. 
In fact, you ready to see what they look like? Look at that. Is that not great? All right, I'm gonna come over here and get me a little, little cheese to garnish it with. A little parsley from my garden. And watch us say, let's go down here and get us a piece of that ultimate coffee cake. right here. Oh, it smells so butterscotchy. And look at the nuts. Looks yummy. Look at that. That omelet looks like a professional omelet maker made it. This one has black olives in it and red bell peppers and tomatoes. Mmm. Everybody is going to have a ball putting together their omelets. <laughs> You're not going to believe what that butterscotch pudding does to that. It made like a caramel syrup. Mmm. So what do y'all think? Hadn't it been an extravagant day today? I hope your egg baskets are full of delicious eggs. Hey y'all, it's Paula Dean. Now, if y'all enjoyed this week's full episode Friday, be sure to like it and click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be alerted when I post a video. Love and best dishes, friends. <laughs>